Once you've started up the automation and you've selected a market, um, you will see that you have a tab up here. And this tab basically tells you what you can do within this particular market. So at the moment automation isn't switched on, there are no rules for us to use and we need to create a rule in this particular market. So let's go ahead and do that. As the name suggests, what you need to do is create a new rules file for, the, for this selected market. And what you're effectively doing is you're going to create a container that contains rules for BetAngel to act on. So let's go ahead and do that. If I click on create a new rules for selected market, that will bring up a dialog box. So we can see here we've got a dialog box and I'll go in and explain um, each of the key elements of this particular box. Uh, so the first thing you probably want to do is name your rule. So if I go up here and call it something, we will call this my first automation rule. You can see that we've now created a container where we're going to put all of our rules. And now we need to put rules within that container. And that's done by applying characteristics to any particular rule. So we've got the container, it's called my first automation rule. Now we need to create the specific rules. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say place a back bet. So we name it something friendly that we can remember what on earth it was that we did. Um, so the, on this particular rule, we're going to place a back bet. So if we select the rule type, you can see there are a whole list of options that you have here. Place a back bet, place a lay bet, back all selections, lay all, close trade on selection, etc, etc. You can see there are lots of things that you can do loads of interesting things. So on this one we're just going to place a back bet and then we have to decide exactly what it is um, that when we want this to start and finish. So we can do a fixed date or time at some point in the future but typically people do it relative to an event start time and you can do it relative to in play time as well. So you can see here we can select you know start one minute out you can see here it says arm trigger at one minute before the event time or after, however you want to do that, and it, will, and it will continue to do this until zero. So on this particular occasion we're doing a horse race, one minute before the start, up until post time, this rule will be active in this particular market. And then you can see down here it says, allow the rule to trigger one times and wait five seconds before rearming. So these are just the general parameters that cover exactly what you're trying to do. So, you know, you could, if you wanted to do something from an hour out, and you could actually get it to arm 60 times, i.e. once every minute. Uh, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it, and you'll have to play with the rules to decide what you want to do. And then we have to apply it to a selection. So if we um, click on the drop-down menu, you can see that we can actually apply it to something by name. So this could be the name of a horse, it could be uh, the draw, it could be um, a football team, and a, it could be anything really or we can do it by the row and what we mean by the row is um, if you look, I'll just move this out of the way for a second if you look on here, this is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6, row 7, row 8, row 9 so if we um, indicate that we want to do a rule by row number it will, it will just focus on that row so typically on a horse race the first row is the favourite so if you want to do just the favourite you can do it by just the favourite by nominating row 1 or the draw, for example, in a football match is row 3, and it, that's fixed. However, you may not want to do that, and you may actually want to do it in order of favoritism. So by that we mean, if you do number 1, that's the first favorite in this market. If you do number 2, that's the second favorite. Number 3 would be the third favorite, and so on and so forth. Betanger will work that out for you. So at the moment, um, let's change this back to 1 minute. BetAngel will go into this market, place a back bet, and we're going to say place it in order of favoritism on the favorite. So we BetAngel will one minute out, place a back bet on the favorite. That's what this particular part of the rule does. And now we have to apply conditions and parameters to it. Now don't get worried about it, they're quite simple to do. It just allows you to modify the way that the bet is placed and what triggers that bet. So if we look at the parameters, at the moment our rule says place a back bet. If we click on parameters, this will give us how we're going to place that back bet. So here you can see we can place it at a fixed price, the best market price, the second or third best market price, a certain number of ticks above or below the market price, um, a number of ticks above or below SP in the market, 
uh, all number of characteristics. But what we're going to say on this one is we'll keep it simple. We're going to do take the best market price. So we're going to place a back bet at the best market price. That's the rule that we've constructed so far. If we look at the stake as well, you can see there's a range of options that you can have by stake. But again, we're going to keep this simple. We're going to just do a fixed amount. We're going to place a £10 back bet. Now, if you want to get clever from a trading perspective, you can get BetAngel to apply global settings to it. I suggest you watch the global settings video to understand all of the functions that are available here, but there are an awful lot. So you can do offset bets, offset with stop, trailing stop, greening, a variety of different things. You can offset by a number of amount, you can put a stop in place, you can place fill or curl bets with a certain amount of delay and offset batches and so on and so forth. So this controls how the bet is placed in the market. So the first tab is what are we going to do? On this occasion we're going to place a back bet on the favourite. The second tab is how's that bet going to reach the market and does it inherit any global settings? And then the third part of the rule um, are conditions. So this is where you can get very clever with the automation on BetAngel. So if I click on new we're going to apply a new condition to our £10 back bet on the favourite and these are all of the condition types that you can use and we're adding these all the time so check back and see uh, what's, what rules are available at any one particular point in time. So you can see here um, we've got an in play condition. What does that mean? Well that's quite simple really. We're saying you know place this back bet and make sure that the market is not in play or place this back bet when the market is in play. Um, fixed odds condition is saying basically uh, place this bet when the current uh, selection um, or a nominated selection you can see here we can nominate at any other selection in this market and then we can say the back price, the lay price, the last traded price, the SP, the projected SP, uh, all of these things um, are less than or greater to a certain value. And we also have a relatives odd condition um, which allows you to point um, you'd say this selection's back price is less than the back price of another selection. So you can see you can do all sorts of really really clever things here. You can make one bet conditional on another position or uh, rather this particular back bet could be conditional on the price of something else being a certain price as well. I'm not going to go through and explain all of these conditions. I suggest you fire up BetAngel in practice mode and try out each one of them and have a good mess around. But you can see there are loads of things in here. Absolutely loads. So we've got um, historic fixed odds. You can look back at what the price was at some point and place your, your bet according to that. Weight of money, number of selections, um, the amount of profit that you're making in the market, the number of bets you've got in the market. Um, the book percentage, unsuspended time, um, fill, or, fill or kill, t time condition, volume, stall draw, loads and loads of things. And the great thing about this is if I go in here and apply a certain rule, um, I mean we haven't, let's, let's keep this simple actually so that I can dem demonstrate this quickly. Um, you can see we've applied that rule, we've said the market is not in play, you can see that that's listed it there. But what I can now do is layer other conditions on it. So if I want to say to it the market is not in play and um, you know some other factor in it, the unsuspended time is greater than 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that rule doesn't make sense. I'm just trying to demonstrate that you can um, apply more than one setting. The green or the amount of money that I've made is greater than £10 um, and so on and so forth. All I'm trying to demonstrate here, none of these rules make sense combined. Uh, or not in the context in which we're using them, but I'm just trying to show you that you can actually layer many, many conditions in here as well. So you can do some brilliantly um, complex stuff in here. And so you can keep it as simple or as complex as you like. And this will all supplement your existing trading as well. So automation can run in the background while you're doing something else, or it can just run completely automatically. So um, I suggest, you know, there's a, a lot of depth behind these. You need to explore each one of those individually. And on this particular occasion, we don't actually need any of these. So we will just delete those rules. And this is a really simple piece of automation saying, place a back bet a minute before the off, do it once, place it for £10. And we're not going to attach any conditions to it. So that's probably the simplest rule that you can do. And if I click on apply, you can see here that it updates this particular container. So we're saying place a back bet at this uh, a minute before the off on the favourite. 
Yeah, simple as that. And we can then apply that rule into the market. So if we save that, we can actually go over to the automation rules here um, and apply this to this particular market. And to apply it to this particular market, all that we need to do is select it from the drop-down menu. So if I click on there, put in my first automation rule, um, a minute before the start of this particular race, a back bet will be placed for £10 on the favourite. It's as simple as that. If you don't want a rule to apply to that market, you can just clear it. And that rule will no longer apply. And you can see here you've got conditions. You can apply the rule to all markets, apply it to selected markets. So if we went in here, we could apply the rule to those selected markets. In fact, we haven't selected the rule, so it helps if I do that. Select the rule, apply rules to selected markets. There you go. And if I wanted to, I can remove them all from that market as well. So you can see it's really simple to apply rules. But what you can also do, if we edit this rules file again, is you can actually add in many, many more rules below it. And they can all be completely different. So if I use this icon here, I can actually copy that rule and then edit it. So I could say, OK, I want you to place a back bet on the second favourite as well. And if we apply that, then it's basically saying place a back bet on the first favourite, place a back bet on the second favourite, a minute before the off, etc, etc, etc. So you can apply as many rules as you want within a container. And that means that you can actually place a trade automatically and hedge the position automatically um, before the race has started without you having to do a thing. Bet Angel can do it all for you. So in a nutshell, um, and on a very basic level, that's how the automation works. If you're interested in learning more about Bet Angel, visit betangel.com and download a free trial today.